Hi, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome to English Grammar section. On this video, we're going to discuss a little bit about parts of speech, about the meanings of parts of speech, then kind of parts of speech, and then we, after that, going to focus our discussion on the part of noun. Okay, so uh, this section will have a question at the end of the video so make sure that you follow the video from the beginning up to the end okay now we're going to start with the meaning the meaning of the part of speech is a class of word based on the word function the way it works in a sentence I'm going to explain it also in Indonesia in order to make you more understand about what is part of speech. Jadi, part of speech adalah uh, suatu klasifikasi dari kata-kata yang dikategorikan dari peran dan fungsinya dalam struktur kalimat uh, sebuah bahasa. Dengan mengetahui part of speech, seseorang dapat mengetahui fungsi kata pada suatu kalimat. Jadi, kalau kita paham pengertian dan fungsi dari uh, part of speech, maka Anda juga akan paham tentang uh, fungsi dari masing-masing kata tersebut dalam suatu kalimat. Jadi dalam satu kalimat itu kan terdiri dari e, lebih dari satu kata kan. Jadi dia itu tersusun dari beberapa kata kan. Nah, masing-masing kata itu mempunyai fungsi masing-masing. Nah, untuk mengetahui fungsi dari masing-masing kata yang terbentuk dalam suatu kalimat tersebut, Anda harus mengerti terlebih dahulu pengertian dari part of speech macam-macamnya dan juga fungsinya. Part of speech uh, itu merupakan langkah pertama yang perlu Anda ketahui untuk mempelajari bahasa Inggris. Jadi bisa dibilang untuk pemula belajar tentang part speech adalah penting sekali. Jadi uh, dengan memahami bentuk dari kalimat uh, dalam bahasa Inggris itu penting. Tetapi untuk memahami bentuk kalimat tersebut perlu terlebih dahulu memahami masing-masing eh, bagian dari kalimat tersebut. Kind of part of speech. There are nine kind of part of speech. I'm going to show you one by one. Number one, noun. In Indonesia, it called as kata benda. Number two, pronoun. In Indonesia, it's called as kata ganti. Atau lebih tepatnya sebagai kata ganti suatu benda. Verb in Indonesia, it's called as kata kerja. Adverb disebut kata keterangan. Adjective disebut kata sifat. Six, preposition. Dalam bahasa Indonesia, it called as Kata depan. Seven. Conjunction. Dalam bahasa Indonesia disebut kata hubung. Eight. Interjection. Dalam bahasa Indonesia disebut kata seru. Nine. The last. Dear minor. Dear minor dalam bahasa Indonesia disebut sebagai kata yang merujuk kepada kata benda. Jadi, dia adalah 
kata yang dibuat untuk membantu menunjuk kepada benda yang lebih spesifik. Ya. So, uh, uh, the detail information about this part of speech it's going to explain later on, okay? So, this is the illustration in the form of uh, illustration pictures of part of speech. Part of speech consists of noun, interjection, conjunction, preposition, adverb, article. So, article is a part of the de determiner, okay? So, it's okay whether you want to call it as determiner or article. Adjective, verb, and pronoun. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There are nine parts of speech. Noun, interjection, conjunction, preposition, adverb, article, adjective, verb, and pronouns. Uh, one of the uh, kinds of part of speech is noun. So, we're going to discuss about noun. Noun is a thing or it could be a person, it could be a place, it could be an idea. So, noun is usually take a very important rule is in, in a sentence. So, usually it's one of the most important thing in a sentence. So, noun can be a subject or even can be an object in a sentence. So, sometimes they are capitalized when they are referred to the name of a person or name of a, a town, name of a country. And everything and etc. These are the example of the using of noun in some sentences. Uh, the first one is late last year our neighbor bought a goat. Late last year last year is adverb of time so uh, that consists of the word last and year year is a noun that following the last so the last is become the uh, adverb of year and then the word neighbor is become the subject that both a goat that become an object so see it the noun can be merged into anything so Portia White was an opera singer Portia White in this case is a noun this is the name of an actress so it's also uh, you can say as a subject and then opera singer in this case is an object which is also a noun and then the bus inspector looked at all the passenger passes uh, in this case the bus inspector is a noun the bus inspector become the subject and then the passenger passes is also the passenger pace Pass, sorry, the passenger pass is also a noun. It's an object. Okay, bus inspectors uh, is the noun that consists of bus and inspector. So uh, the conclusion is you can find the noun in many faces.
noun may change by a certain thing. I mean, uh, they there are two words which is have the same meaning, but they have a different writing and then they have different vocabulary. Both of them are the same noun and the same meaning. So the different of it is because of the noun gender, the noun plurals, the noun of a possessive or possessive noun. About one of it, each of it, we're going to discuss it on the next slide. Okay, noun gender is the noun that is changed because of the gender. So, in the world, we are divided into woman and a man. So, between the gender of woman and man, they might have a different noun. This is the examples. David Garrick was a very prominent 18th century actor. So, take a look to the word, the red colored uh, word, which is actor. Actor is identically to man. David Garrick is a man. That's why it's called an actor. So, the noun is differentiate. Uh, it could be changed because of the gender of the subject. Or, or of the other of the other noun and then the second Sarah Sidon was at height of her career as an actress yes because Sarah Sidon is a girl so it called an actress not an actor okay the next example, the manager was trying to write a one ad, but he couldn't decide whether he was advertising, advertising for a waiter or a waitress. So the manager cannot differentiate with it. It is which is it is a waiter or a waitress. Waiter it's usually called uh, the surfing man in a restaurant or maybe in a bar. Waitress, it's usually the surfing woman in a restaurant or in a bar. So remember and be careful, be careful of using the noun because the noun sometimes may change because of the gender. Well, noun may be different also because of uh, whether it is plural or it is singular. When it is singular and plural, we're going to put a different noun on it. Like the exam example, when Matthew was small, he rarely told the truth if he thought he was going to be punished. Many people do not believe the truths are self-evident. Okay, perhatikan for the word truth and truths. The truth is singular and then the truths with S is plural. So, both of them have the same meaning but truth is singular and truths are plural. He tripped over a box, left carelessly in the hallway. Since we are moving, we will need many boxes. So the word box and boxes have the same meaning, but the word box is uh, singular and then the word boxes are plural. So remember that plural might be have the same meaning but might be have a different written form based on the number which is uh, it is plural or it is a singular. 
So uh, the noun could be different in writing when it is have a function on possessive. So you can form possessive case of a singular noun that does not end in s by adding an apostrophe and s as in the following sentence. The red sweet case is Cassandra's. Cassandra itu adalah suatu kata atau noun yang belakangnya itu tidak diakhiri oleh s. Sehingga Anda boleh menaruh apostrof di belakangnya kemudian ditambah s. You can form the possessive case of a singular noun and end in s by adding an apostrophe alone or by adding an apostrophe and s as in the following example. The bus seat are very uncomfortable. So, kata the bus itu berakhiran s kan? Nah, jadi, Anda boleh menaruh apostrof saja tanpa memberi S di belakangnya. But, you can also put S after the apostrof. It's accept to you. Like on the example, The bus seat are very uncomfortable. So you can use bus and bus. So that's all the same. You can form the possessive case of a plural noun that does not end in S by adding an apostrophe and a s as in the following example the sips pen was marked out every day so take a look to the the word sips okay uh, sip is plural but you still can give s after the plural and then you you put s after the apostrophe jadi kata sip itu uh, plural kan dia nggak perlu dikasih s untuk membuatnya menjadi plural jadi kalau seperti itu anda tinggal cukup memberi apostrof kemudian s di belakangnya you can from the possessive case of A plural noun then does end in s by adding an apostrophe. Okay, like the example, the janitor's room is downstairs and to the left. Nah, the word janitor's itu kan plural, ada s-nya di belakang. Boleh diberi apostrophe. Kemudian tanpa diberi S lagi di belakangnya. Seperti ini. Tapi kalau misalnya uh, Anda mau memberikan S sesudah ini, tidak apa-apa juga. Tidak masalah. Tapi biasanya uh, lebih umum dipakai seperti ini. Oke, okay. perhatikan baik-baik ya contoh itu. These are the exercises for you. I see the stewardess is bringing my mother's bag. The actress dog was so stressed when he knows that the bone are up. I want you to take uh, the noun on the sentences and name what kinds of noun is it. Please do it on the comment column section below. Good luck. 
that's all my explanations about the noun that could be changed because a certain thing uh, next video i'm going to explain you further about what is noun so thank you for now see you wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh